Hello, and welcome to MercuryBadges.com Launch Complex 34, Then and Now. The early 1960s was a time of fierce competition between the world's two superpowers, the United States and Soviet Union. One of the ideological battlegrounds of capitalism and communism was the space race, and President John F. Kennedy's challenge to land a man on the moon and return him safely to the Earth before the decade was out. Early in the competition, the Soviet Union had outpaced the U.S. with the successful flight of Sputnik 1, the first Earth-orbiting satellite, and with Yuri Gagarin's globe-circling ride in Vostok 1. These flights not only demonstrated the Soviet Union's ability to loft much heavier payloads than the U.S., but also to deliver nuclear warheads to their targets. The political environment of fear these events created gave impetus to the efforts of Werner von Braun and his team of rocket scientists to develop a heavy-lift vehicle named the Saturn. The Saturn I was composed primarily of proven components that included a cluster of eight tanks from existing Jupiter and Redstone rockets and modified H-1 engines. Fuels were composed of familiar RP-1, a form of kerosene, and liquid oxygen. The assembled booster achieved just over 1.5 million pounds of thrust and when made it to a second stage in nose cone, measured 180 feet tall. To handle this super rocket, Launch Complex 34 was conceived and created. Located on the north end of the Cape Canaveral Missile Test Annex, now the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Brevard County, Florida, the facility was dedicated on June 5, 1961 and was the largest launch site in the free world at the time. The metal and concrete launch pedestal measured 42 feet on a side and stood 24 feet above the pad, small when compared to the service structure that measured over 131 feet wide and, along with the umbilical tower, stood over 300 feet tall. The flame deflector that sat under the pedestal weighed 99 tons. Between October 27, 1961 and July 30, 1965, a series of 10 successful Saturn I flights were launched from Complex 34. In addition, there were three flights using the upgraded Saturn IIb, which culminated in the last manned flight from the Cape, Apollo 7, on October 11, 1968. Today, all that remains is the Black House, launch pedestal, and flame deflectors, tossed to one side of the concrete remnants of the circular pad, cable trench, and other miscellaneous site improvements, long abandoned like ancient Egyptian ruins. Those who visit the site can walk up and touch the imposing steel and concrete launch pedestal that supported the great Saturn rockets and view the sky through the 24-foot-wide exhaust opening in the platform through which the eight H-1 engines poured their explosive combination of kerosene and liquid oxygen. However, the now peaceful and serene scene one encounters at Launch Complex 34 fails to convey the clash of civilizations and sense of urgency and concern that motivated its construction over 50 years ago. The site is now a memorial for the Apollo 1 crew of Virgil I. Gus Grissom, Edward H. White, and Roger B. Chafee, killed in a flash fire that swept through their Block 1 Apollo capsule on January 27, 1967, during a routine test. Although the Cape is a restricted area, the public can vis visit the site as part of the Kennedy Space Center then and now tour or once a year during a memorial service held on the anniversary of the fire. A polished brass plaque placed on the west side of the southwest pedestal column commemorates the event and astronauts' lives. In the end, the Saturn I confirmed many of the assumptions built to the Apollo program, including the clustering concept that allowed the U.S. to ultimately win the space race and fulfill the goal set by John F. Kennedy eight years earlier.